talk about covariant and contravariant components of a vector or tensors. Uh, to save time, I already have drawn some figures. So given a physical problem, um, we first of all need to decide on the geometry of the coordinate system. So let's say if you have some vector a and you have already fixed the geometry of the problem and let's say the, the, the variables u and v define the geometry and what I have drawn is are the contours of constant u and constant v. This is constant u and this is constant u plus delta u, this is constant v and this is constant v plus delta v. Um, for this we know that uh, we can always, uh, for vector a we can always choose um, a, a coordinate, a set of axes such that the axes are uh, tangential to these contours e1 and e2 and can write vector a as, a, as, as this a i e i. Uh, let's not worry about indices, uh, why they are upper or lower. But for the same geometry, we can also express the vector a in a different way. Uh, for example, what we can do is simply draw the um, the curves which are orthogonal to these constant contours. So you see this is a constant contour and you draw per gradient to these contours and then these, con these gradients will actually form a different set of contours and using these different set of contours one can again do the same thing for the same vector a you can define a new set of axes uh, something like this as a matter of fact the way it's written is not lower but upper indices just a correction and you can write the same vector a um, uh, in terms of these new set of axes uh, with these new um, um, components. Now um, that's about it actually and the reason there is an upper indices here and a lower indices here is just to differentiate between the two and uh, this is called um, uh, the contravariant component of the vector and this is called the covariant components of the vector. Now there is a difference, a major difference between these two components, the way they transform under coordinate transformation. So you have set the geometry, you have fixed the geometry. Let's say you want to change the geometry of the system. If you want to change the geometry of the system, uh, let's say you want to go from x frame uh, to x prime frame, then you will see that the new components you can just simple just using simple calculus you can see that these new components are going to be this oops sorry a i and if you do the same thing here you will see if you do a coordinate transformation from x to x prime uh, uh, this guy change will change as um, a i prime equals del x i well actually x j over del x i prime and a J. So I think this should be J here. This should be J. Uh, this is upper indices. So you see the way it transforms and this happens only because now we are not using these as basic vectors but these as basic vectors. Um, again these two vectors are still the same 
uh, you can in this new coordinate frame if this is how you're writing the new vector then we know that a is nothing but a prime okay um, so these are called the uh, contravariant component of the vectors. A vector may its now this is a, a broad definition contravariant covariant. A vector itself may be contravariant in nature, which may be defined by these transformation laws. For example, simple position vector changes according to this, because all the components uh, change like that. Um, so a position vector is a contravariant vector um, for this set of basis system let me write it again so for the basis system e1 e2 position vector is a contravariant vector and for the same set of, of axis um, gradient of a scalar is a covariant vector. This is defined by the transformation laws. Just based on transformation, we can deduce this. And I believe um, a gradient will be um, a contravariant vector for the basis system uh, this for this particular basis system and um, so it's just the other way around okay um, well now th the contravariant and covariant really are the same if you have um, a geometry in which the basis vectors are orthogonal for example this is a polar coordinate and uh, in polar coordinate we know that uh, the constant contours will be of theta and r let's say it's a two-dimensional problem so um, a theta is e r so a theta and e r are orthogonal and if you should try to find the perpendicular contours you will see that the new contours actually coincide with the original one if it's a three-dimensional problem you can label the label the um, um, uh, the axis like this if you cho choose 1 2 let's say x y z if you are considering the contour x y or let's say e1 e2 e1 e2 then the gradient of that is e3 now you see i'm just showing how to define the con the covariant vector from the gradient of the contour of contravariant vectors. Um, similarly, E2, E3 will give you the direction of E1 and similarly the cyclic law. So considering this, we see that constant E theta give you ER and constant ER give you E theta. So really it's not much of a problem for orthogonal uh, geometry contravariant is same as co covariant for curved geometry it really makes a difference now there's one thing which we usually see is that the, the dot product is defined like this and if you use the same idea you will see uh, and this is nothing we know a x now these are just components and not we are not really worried about these are just numbers so we are not really worried about the position of these these guys okay and you will see that um, you will achieve obtain the same expression so what you do you start with aj uh, you have aj now you start with bj and um, now you uh, well actually bj is the vector vector bj and express this in now this is covariant uh, contravariant 
you express, you change the basic system such that you now have BJs. And because they are orthogonal, you will see that this guy is nothing but the whole thing. And this is true for certainly for orthogonal um, access systems. So this is a way to write um, the, the inner product. Now you see the access system has been changed from here to here by finding the gradient of these contours. Uh, the same thing can be done and uh, quantitatively and the way the thing that does it that if you have a contravariant component of a vector you can make it the bring it become make it covariant by multiplying it with something called the metric so this actually you can sum over j and you will see this gives you a actually let's call this i and this gives you a i so you went from contravariant to covariant and this is nothing but dependent on the geometry of the system as we saw that it's only the geometry that defines how the new gradients will look like so g i j is nothing but comes from the geometry of the system I mean the, the coordinate system. Okay, so using G, Gij one can actually define um, go from a, a covariant component of vector to contravariant uh, component of the same vector uh, sorry or, or vice versa actually. So one can actually also do Ai can be taken by using the, the corresponding Gij. Now again this is from geometry and a j and this gives us a i the new a i all right so um, we went from covariant to contravariant and this is called g i j and g i j are called the metric metric of the geometry. Now I think we'll talk about the metric in the next lesson to make things more clear about the way the indices have been put and this whole process of going from contravariant to covariant. I just wanted to introduce how um, I mean I just want to introduce how um, this inner product actually extends to the case when the axes are not orthogonal. So Gij is actually delta ij for a Cartesian system and this delta ij gives you this if you take another product you, you get this but for some curvy linear or curved coordinate system gij is not delta ij and we'll talk about general gij in the